All right, guys. Well, we're officially done with the chapter as far as content goes. Now we can just do the extra practice problems. Uh, this one reads, analyze the motion of a particle, charge Q with mass M in the magnetic field of a long straight wire carrying a steady current I. Is this kinetic energy, is its kinetic energy conserved? Find the force on the particle in cylindrical coordinates with I along the z-axis. C. Obtain the equations of motion. And D. Suppose z dot, which is a time derivative of z, is constant. Describe the motion. Alrighty. So for part A, yes. The energy is conserved because recall that magnetic forces do no work. This was one of the biggest sections in here and something that's still a little fluffy in our head but we'll go with it for now b we know that from ampere's law we can find the magnetic field which is mu naught over 2 pi s in the phi hat direction and v which is just a cylindrical uh, velocity from the cylindrical uh position is s dot s hat plus s phi hat phi dot phi hat plus z dot z hat this is a uh, if you you might recall these type of derivatives from classical mechanics um, this will also apply for the acceleration, which we'll see in a second. So nonetheless, we know that the force is equal to Q uh, V cross B, so let's find a cross product. And uh, that yields mu naught over 2 pi S uh, with negative Z dot S hat plus S dot Z hat. So multiply by Q, we get the force. Pretty straightforward. Now for the equations of motion, we know that force equals mass times acceleration which is equal to the force we just found, the Lorentz force. And so we can solve for the acceleration. We do that by dividing by m. Um, note that the acceleration, again, in the cylindrical coordinate system, can be found in several textbooks or looked up. Um, so we do this, and we set alpha equal to this constant, since those are unchanging. Uh, what we want to do, though, is you notice how we have three components. Well, we need to set each component equal so for s hat the s hat component we see that we have s double dot minus s phi dot squared is equal to negative alpha z dot over s and then we have s double dot plus 2 s dot phi dot or phi double dot excuse me equals zero and then z double dot equal alpha s dot over s all right so now that we have the equations of motion we can set uh, z dot uh, equal to a constant um, and we know that if it is a constant the derivative of a constant is zero so z double dot is zero and then it follows that from the third equation if z double dot is zero s dot has to be zero since you're setting it equal to zero solve that through if s dot's equal to zero then that implies that s is equal to a constant just integrate zero and you uh, rather just uh, take the derivative of a constant you get zero so then the first equation says that if s is constant and s dot is zero, that uh, phi dot squared is equal to alpha times z dot over s squared, because uh, we divide it through, and then solve that for phi dot. This, uh, but clearly, this is also a constant since z dot is a constant. So the second uh, equation holds that we have the double dots equal to zero. Good to go there. And so what this tells us is that the charge moves in a helix around the wire. 